warrior lord. Then I, I heard what sounded like the roar of a huge crowd, like the sound of rushing waters, like loud peals of thunder saying, Hallelujah! Adonai, God of heaven's armies, has begun his reign. Let us rejoice and be glad. Let us give him the glory. For the time has come for the wedding of the Lamb. And his bride has prepared herself fine linen, bright and clean, has been given her to wear. Fine linen means the righteous deeds of God's people. The angel said to me, Right, how blessed are those who have been invited to the wedding feast of the Lamb. Then he added, These are God's very words. I fell at his feet to worship him, but he said, Don't do that. I am only a fellow servant with you and your brothers who have the testimony of Yeshua. Worship God, for the testimony of Yeshua is the spirit of prophecy. Next, I saw heaven opened, and there before me was a white horse. Sitting on it was the one called Faithful and True, and it is in righteousness that he passes judgment and goes to battle. His eyes were like a fiery flame, and on his head were many royal crowns. And he had a name written which no one knew but himself. He was wearing a robe that had been soaked in blood. And the name by which he is called is the Word of God. The armies of heaven, clothed in fine linen, white and pure, were following him on white horses. And out of his mouth comes a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations. He will rule them with a staff of iron. It is he who treads the winepress from which flows the wine of the furious rage of Adonai, God of heaven's armies. And on his robe and on his thigh he has written, King of kings and Lord of lords. Then I saw an angel standing in the sun and cried out with a loud voice to all the birds that fly about in midheaven, Come! Gather together for the great feast God is giving to eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of generals, the flesh of important men and the flesh of horses and their riders and the flesh of all kinds of people, free and slaves, small and great. I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to do battle with the rider of the horse and his army. But the beast was taken captive, and with it the false prophet, who in its presence had done the miracles which he had used to deceive those who had received the mark of the beast and those who had worshipped his image. The beast and the false prophet were both thrown alive into the lake of fire that burns with sulfur. The rest were killed with a sword that goes out of the mouth of the rider on the horse. And all the birds gorged themselves on their flesh. Revelation 19, 6 through 21. In the Complete Jewish Bible by Stern. I am Adonai, there is no other besides me, there is no God. I am arming you although you don't know me, so that those from the east and those from the west will know that there is none beside me. I am Adonai. There is no other. I form light. I create darkness. I make well-being. I create wall. I, Adonai, do all these things. Heavens above rain down justice. Let the clouds pour it down. Let the earth open so that salvation springs up and justice sprouts with it. I, Adonai, have created it. Isaiah 45, 5 through 8. First Samuel 17. The Philistine rallied their troops for war. Assembling at Soko and Yehuda and setting up camp between Soko and Azeka and Eps Damin. When they rallied their troops for war, they were gathering their armies to battle. Machane 
is an encampment of travelers or troops, hence an army, whether literally soldiers or figuratively, of dancers, angels, cattle, locusts, stars, or even sacred courts, armed band, battle camp, company, drove, host, tent. And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together and pitched by the valley of Elah and set the battle in array against the Philistines. Melchama, in the sense of fighting a battle, engagement generally, war, warfare, battle, fight, war, year. Let's go down to verse 45. And then David answered the Philistine. What Philistine was that? It was Goliath of Gath. You're coming at me with a sword and a spear and a javelin. But I am coming at you in the name of Adonai Zavaot, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you've challenged. Today, Adonai will hand you over to me. I will attack you, lop off your head, and give you the carcasses of the army of the Philistine to the birds in the air and the animals in the land. Then all the land will know that there is a God in Israel. This is the uh, the Lord of hosts. I come to you in the name of the Lord, Seva, a mass of persons, especially um, Seva. Uh, a whole uh, organized for war by implication a campaign literally or figuratively hardship or worship appointed time army battle company host service soldiers waiting upon war and then in the army's marake an arrangement a pile a military arraign armies fight to be set in order placed rank and row and let us go to Isaiah 10 verse 1 woe to those who enact unjust decrees and draft oppressive legislation to deprive the impoverished of justice and rob my people's poor of their rights, looting widows and preying on orphans. What will you do on the day of punishment when calamity comes from afar? To whom will you flee for your help? Where will you leave your wealth so as not to squat among the prisoners or fall among the slain? Even after all this, his anger remains. His upraised hand still threatens. Oh, Ashur, the rod expressing my anger. The club in their hands is my fury. I am sending against him a hypocritical nation, ordering him to march against the people who enraged me, to take the spoil and the plunder and trample them down like mud in the streets. That is not what Ashur intends. That is not what they think. Rather, they mean to destroy, to cut down nation after nation. For their kings say, aren't all my commanders kings? Hasn't cut, no suffered like Tarkimish, Hamal like Arafat, Shomrom like Damascus? Yes, as my hands reach the kingdoms of non-gods with more images than in Jerusalem and Shomrom. So what I do to Jerusalem and her non-gods, what I did to Shomrom and her idols. Therefore, when I, Adonai has done everything he intends to do to Mount Zion and Yerushalayim, I will punish the king of Ashur for the boasting that comes from his proud heart and from reveling in his arrogant looks. Let's look to verse 20. This is Isaiah 10, 20. On that day, the remnant of Israel, those of the house of Yaakov who escaped, will no longer rely on the man who struck them down, but will rely on Adonai, the Holy One of Israel. A remnant will return, the remnant of Yaakov, to the mighty God. For although your people Israel are like the sand of the sea, 
Only a remnant of them will remain. Destruction is decreed, overflowing with justice. Adonai Elohim Savaot will bring about this decreed destruction throughout all the land. Therefore, Adonai Elohim Savaot says, My people living in Zion, don't be afraid of Ashur, even when he strikes you with a stick and raises his staff against you the way it was in Egypt. From but a little while my fury will end and my anger will have destroyed them. Adonai Sava will wield a whip against them as he did when striking Midian at the rock of Orev. As his staff was over the sea, he will raise it the way it was in Egypt. And so we have the decrees of God that he sends the armies of the Lord his armies to bring about his decrees and his judgment to bring them against the mighty nobles and all those who oppose him. Isaiah 13. This is a prophecy about Babylon, which Yeshua, the son of Amos, saw hoist a banner on a high mountain, shout to the invaders, beckon them to enter the nobles' gate. I have ordered my holy ones, summoned my heroes eager and bold, to execute my anger. Listen, a tumult on the mountains, it's a sound like a vast multitude. Listen, the uproar of the kingdoms, of the nations gathering together. Adonai Savaud is mustering an army for war. They come from a distant land from beyond the horizon. It's Adonai with the weapons of his rage to lay waste to all the earth. Howl for the day of Adonai is at hand. Destruction coming from Shaddai. This is why every arm will hang limp and everyone's courage melt away. They will be gripped by panic, seized with pain and agony, writhing like a woman in labor, looking aghast at each other, faces aflame. Here comes the day of Adonai, full of cruelty, rage, and hot fury to desolate the earth and destroy the sinners in it. For the stars, the constellations in the sky will no longer give their light. The sun will be dark when it rises and the moon will no longer shine. I will punish the world for its evil and the wicked for their iniquity. I will end the arrogance of the proud and humble the insolence of tyrants. I will make humans rarer than gold, scarcer than Ophir's pure gold. This is why I will make the heavens tremble and the earth will be shaken from its place at the wrath of Adonai Savaot on the day of his fierce anger. Then, like a hunted gazelle, like a sheep with no one to gather them, everyone will head back to his own people. Everyone will flee to his own land. Anyone found will be pierced through. Anyone caught will fall by the sword. Their babies dashed to pieces before their eyes. Their houses looted, their wives raped. I will stir up against them the Medes, who cannot be tempted by silver or bought off with gold. Their bowls will tear young men to pieces. They will have no pity on the fruit of the womb. Their eyes will not spare their children. Thus, Babel, that jewel of kingdoms, the pride and glory of the Hasidim, will be like Sodom and Amorah, will overthrown by God. It will never again be inhabited and never lived in through all generations. Arabs will not pitch their tents there, nor shepherds bring their flocks. But wildcats will lie there. Their houses will be full of owls. Ostriches will live there. And wild goats will dance there, jackals will howl in their palaces, and wild dogs in their temples of delight. Its time is close at hand. Its days will not last long. It's here. 13. It's here. 24. Look at a nice stripping and destroying the land, turning it upside down and scattering its inhabitants. Cohen and commoner, slave and master, maid and mistress, buyer and seller, lender and borrower, creditor and debtor. The land will be completely stripped, completely plundered. For Adonai has spoken this word. The land fades and withers, the world wilts and withers. The exalted of the land languish. The land lies defiled under its inhabitants because they have transgressed the teachings, changed the law, and broken the everlasting covenant. Therefore, a curse is devouring the land and its inhabitants are punished for their guilt. 
It is why those living there waste away and the people left are few. The new wine fails, the vines wilt, all the revelers sigh. The happy sound of tambourine ceases, the sound of merrymakers are still. The joy of the lyre ends, they no longer sing as they drink their wine. Strong liquor tastes bitter to those drinking it. The city of chaos is shattered, every house closed up. No one can enter in the streets, they are crying over wine. All joy has faded, cheer has left the land. In the city, only desolation, its gates are battered. Beyond repair. Around the earth among the peoples it will be as when beating an olive tree, as when gleaning the grapes at the end of the harvest. They lift their voices singing for joy, shouting from the west to honor Adonai. So in the east, honor Adonai. In the coastlands, honor the name of Adonai, the God of Israel. From the farthest part of the earth, we have heard them sing glory to the righteous one. But I say I'm wasting away. I'm wasting away, woe to me, traitors betray. Oh, how the traitors betray and betray. Terror pit and a trapper upon you, you who are living on the earth. He who flees at the sound of terror will fall into the pit. He who climbs up out of the pit will be caught in the trap. For the windows above have been opened and the earth's foundation shake. The earth cracks and breaks open. The earth crumbles to pieces. The earth trembles and totters. The earth staggers to and fro like a drunk sways back and forth like a watchman's shelter. Its transgression weighs heavy upon it, and will fall and not rise again. When that day comes, Adonai will punish the armies of the high heaven on high, and the kings of the earth here on earth. They will be assembled like prisoners in a dungeon, and shut up in a prison to be punished many years. Then the moon will be confused, and the sun ashamed, for Adonai Sabaot will rule on Mount Zion and in Yerushalayim with his glory manifests to the rulers of his people.